Hello, it is me again. Um, yeah, coming to you from my home office today. I am not at the showroom. And today I am going to be chatting to the lovely Jodie from Sammy TP. Um, I can see that she's just joined. So I'm going to uh, see if I can get her on here. Let's have a look. There we go. Just waiting for Jodie. See a few people you are joining. That's amazing. So, hello. Hello. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. I might need to sit a bit further back from the video. I'm a bit close. <laughs> yeah. Well, Hannah, Hannah said that yesterday when um, when she went on the split screen, she had no forehead, so <laughs> <laughs> so she had to move back a little bit. Oh, thanks for having me. That's all right. Thanks for coming on. I thought it's a really nice opportunity whilst we're all at home in the middle of the day looking at our phones 25 million times a day to uh, come on and chat and just find out a few things about each other. Because oh. obviously I've known you for quite a while, haven't I? You certainly have. But I've never been a client of yours, so I've never seen that side of it. No, no. Really? That's the sort of thing that I want to talk to you about today. Perfect. Bro. So, tell us a bit about you then. So those of you that don't know me, I'm Jodie, owner of Sammy TP. Owner of Sammy TP. Um, this year we won the Wedding Industry Award um, for the, well, the National Award even for Best Marquee Provider. And... Good. Uh, you were there, Leslie? I was. It, it was, was a very, very special moment, wasn't it? Very special <laughs> and a very good evening thereafter. With the, with we won't the, talk about that. Like, we don't talk about that, but you do know that side of me. <laughs> I know that side of you, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, we've also written a book called The Ultimate Guide to Plan an Outdoor Wedding, which is an Amazon uh, number one bestseller. Um, so basically, we help couples to have an outdoor wedding with um, TPs and this year we well no last year we added to our collection uh, glamping TPs and also a self host tent. Amazing. So a few options there. Amazing. So you hire out TPs, don't you? Yeah. You hire out sailcloths and other a few other bits and bobs on your website like furniture and and other yeah. things. Absolutely. We want to make sure it's as simple as possible. So I would say if it's practical. Um, we'll provide that for you. So what that means is table, chairs, furniture, lighting. We can help with toilets generator. When it comes to pretty detail, then they need to talk to the likes of you. Well, that's what we're here for, isn't it? Um, I wouldn't know where to begin to put the teepees up. And you've got quite a big team, haven't you? Yeah, we've got, um, we work with a team of between five and six on our setup team. And then I've got a number of lovely ladies that help and support me in the office, um, sort of managing, putting those two events together before we hand them over to our setup team. Amazing. So uh, how long have you been doing this then? When did you start? So we started, we began our sort of business journey back in 2012. Um, we were actually living out in the Middle East at the time. Um, I say we, husband and I, Craig, who joint owners of the company, we knew we were coming back and we knew we wanted to do something together, believe it or not. Um, and we literally got a blank piece of paper out on what is it that we want to do. And we basically came up with the idea of helping others to have outdoor events. Um, and then came along with, then came the TPs and then recently, as I say, it's come the sale class tent. And say so that started back in 2012. So, so yes, we're cocking up in the years now. So 2012, that's what nearly eight years is it yeah eight years this november amazing so how many weddings do you think you've helped with in that time or other events because you don't just do weddings do you no we don't so we support people uh with corporate events so we've done a lot with nottingham uni um leicester uni um and then also um corporate parties so if they're celebrating sort of milestones within their own business or 10 15 20 25 years or they just want a christmas party um and then also people celebrating their own birthdays um so we've we've had i think our oldest birthday celebration was 70 that's um, cool 
and that was organised by her 84-year-old husband. Oh, amazing! <laughs> yeah, that but was that's really trendy. That was really special um, to be able to help them to have that sort of that celebration. Um, so yes. So how many? How many do you think you've done? Gosh, that's a question. Um, <laughs> I don't know now. Um, if we... 500? 1,000? No, probably more in the region of 500. Um, and we've said we've probably had like in the region of 30,000 people come through and see the teepees in that time when you consider sort of 100 people at each wedding sort of thing as well. Crazy. Um, yeah, it is. It is. Absolutely crazy. Um, so do you travel all over? So we like to stay, we always say we work in time, not miles. So we work from 90 um, minutes from our base camp. We're based at Swarkston in Derbyshire, just off the A50. Um, and 90 minutes can get us quite a distance down the M1, or it doesn't actually get us that far north. Um, yes. We would like to work on travel time so that if we need to get to you um, for any reason, we can be there pretty speedy as well. Yeah, um, that's true. What sort of things would you need to come for? Like generators or anything that might go wrong? Touch wood with our generators, we work with a supplier that has an app um, that basically they get notified about any problems before a problem arises. So we don't get called out for generators. I think in our first year we got called out for a generator and that was somebody that had a generator running from Thursday through to their wedding night full time. And just like a car, it's going to run out. Cool. And that's exactly what <laughs> Just as we were getting into bed at 10 o'clock on a Saturday night, Craig had to nip to the petrol station, get them some diesel and, and get them back up and running, which, you know, is something that we don't have to do because, you know, they managed to do that themselves. But of course, that's what we wanted to do for them. We wanted them to carry on partying. So, yes, we're going to get out of bed and go and take them some diesel. Yeah, that, that's really nice. I've had it before where um, I've, I've been doing a wedding and then I've had a call from the, the venue and they've said, oh, can we have some more candles because they've burnt down because they've been in a draft and they've burnt down quicker. And it's been like 11 o'clock at night or, you know, 10 o'clock at night. And I thought, hmm, yeah, okay. So I just nipped some candles. <laughs> I think it's part of the service, isn't it? It is part of the service. Other, call, other things that we'd want to be on site for is everyone always asks us about the weather. Um, and believe it or not, rain isn't an issue for us. Um, the structures are designed to deal with that. The key thing that we want to look at is wind and keeping the wind out of the structures. Um, so we had, it was, um, I think it was actually the 28th. It was July anyway, two years ago. So it was the time that we had that blistering heat wave, but we all of a sudden a storm came in and it came in from nowhere. Mm. Um, so we, Craig, myself, and actually our two children went to Sai over near Rutland and we had to put clear frontage on whilst the couple were at church. So we were doing this to keep the wind out. What it did mean is that they were arriving to their teepees and it had slightly changed because when they left, it was this big opening, it was glorious sunshine. But to ensure that the teepees and their wedding was safe, we just hopped along, did what we needed to do, had a quiet word with the uh, best man in his ear. Um, and they were happy because it meant that they got a safe, secure teepees that wasn't get that guests weren't sat in the wind. And we, mm. just, we just dealt with it for them. Um, yeah. And we we do, we do what we need to do it's really important isn't it like you've got the experience so you know what could <laughs> i mean it's never happened thank goodness but what could potentially happen yeah. inside a very large tent if it, if it was very windy so yeah. and that's it. it's, i always say it's about working working with the right supplies that you know is going to be looking after you throughout the process and also on your big day absolutely and having the confidence in them to give them uh, the suppliers a bit of flexibility that you know we're going to make the right decision for you yes yeah and that's all part of the the getting to know you process as well isn't it yeah absolutely absolutely we, we've we've had clients in the past where you know there's one element of their day that is the most important for example the wedding cake so we really go to town on that cake display to make sure that's perfect if if for a bride they said we really really don't want clear frontage at all you there's things you can put inside isn't there some like wires and things to hold it all together yeah this it's called a wire star which when we have events sort of october onwards we, we just do it and 
people don't notice it, but it, it kind of strengthens the structure. So you've seen it when we have had our autumn showcase events. Hello, Mambo. <laughs> <laughs> um, perfect. Right. So you generally cover within, was it 90 minutes, you said? Yeah, we said 90 minutes. So it takes us sort of um, Derbyshire, Nottinghamshire, Leicestershire, Rutland, um, Northamptonshire. Um, so yeah, it's quite a, Warwickshire, West Mid. So it's quite still quite a big area that we cover. Um, so where do you put them up then? You've got some venues that you are, are in a bit of a contract kind of thing with, haven't you? And then there's you can put them in your gardens. Yeah, absolutely. Possibility. So it's often one of the first questions people ask us is where can it go? And the truth is it can generally go anywhere as long as it's big enough and we've, we've got access in. So if you've got sort of a, a nice sized garden, yes, we can come and do it in there. We will always do a site visit just to check and we've had to trim trees on occasion um, when we've been putting up in gardens. Um, gardens are always a challenge, but they're always a good challenge for the team. They enjoy those because it gives them something to sort of, you know, work towards and say a bit of a challenge. Mm. we can do it in gardens and yes we've got venues that we work with as well across as i say the midlands west midlands area is there any particular you love the most well should i should i not ask that question that's like saying what's your favorite tile <laughs> <laughs> well you know so some lend you lend themselves i know you do a lot of cuttlebrook don't you um and because uh, that's really isn't that on the, the site where you're based? Yeah, so Cutterbrook is where we're based, and also Mambo, who just popped up, um, based there. So we do a lot, but we do a number of weddings there. Um, and then also we've got other sites around Derbyshire and then other sites around sort of the Leicestershire area um, too. Amazing. Um, how long does it generally take to put a TP up? We always say give us a day. Um, and it could be anywhere between sort of four hours to sort of 12 hours and it just it just depends how big the setup is how much stuff you've got as well um but we will always keep you posted on the progress too so that there'll come a point when we want to hand them over to you um so craig who'll be leading the setup team will say we're well, probably about an hour off just to give you a heads up so that the couple can get over to the tps and ready to kind of have a walk around check they've got everything and say do the handover process that's cool because you don't actually stay do you so you put them up and then you hand them over and say have have your shindig and then uh, we'll come back and take them down yeah absolutely so we we when we come back on the sometimes a sunday sometimes the monday depending on when the celebration's been we can generally tell how good that party was by <laughs> what in thereafter i um, i have been to some teepees on a sunday and thought wow yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's quite interesting what we uh, what we walk into. But that's just what when, when all the decor is spread out across the field, and you think, how did that get there? Yeah, it's, it generally means it's been a good it's been a good party, it's been a good night. Yeah, absolutely. And some people have their breakfast in there in the morning, don't they? As well, they do. And we say make the most of it, so particularly if you you've had campers. We always say, or if guests are stopping close by, get them back come together again, have your breakfast. It could be that you crack open a barbecue, stick the bacon on. We've got some sites that will cook breakfast for you even. Enjoy sort of reliving and catching up on mm. those from the night before that maybe you as a couple weren't party to, something happened that you didn't even know about. Mm. Kind of catching up on it all. And it just extends that celebration period. Just soaking it all in and really making the most of it. Yeah, definitely. So... You, you mentioned earlier about glamping teepees or um, glamping tents. So can you tell me a bit about those? So we've got 11 of them. So they are um, mini teepees, the 10 teepees adventure tents. Um, and we can offer those naked. And what that means is that you're just hiring the structure uh, and there's nothing in there. Or you can have it fully kitted, sort of a luxury version where you have got your bed, your bed linen, um the welcome basket with sort of water and snacks in and um, sort of detail inside then that it's just a really nice comfortable space for you to roll into at the end of the night um and it's all set up for you so yeah and people do that just for themselves or they'll hire them all so all the guests can stop into 
um, but we'll work with couples to work out what's best for yeah. them. On that. Not, not every venue allows you to camp, do they? No, not every venue um, does. Um, and again, it's the it's, it, often it's the couple's choice. And if camping's a big thing for them, they generally wouldn't choose a venue that doesn't allow camping. Mm. Um, mm. So. But I suppose if somebody came to you and said that they wanted a venue specifically that offered that, you could then recommend certain... Right. Yeah, absolutely. That's cool. Um, what was I going to ask them? I, I had something in my head and I was like, <laughs> no, <laughs> it's gone. Uh, so, yeah, when do the TPs normally go up? So we always say for a Saturday wedding, an absolute minimum that you're going to kind of they'll be arriving is the Thursday that could be as early as the Wednesday or the Tuesday um so for a Saturday wedding you've always always got Friday to do what you need to do so that might be when yourself Leslie comes in and starts with sort of the styling um and then Saturday morning to finish that off ready for the day and then take down as a minimum is Sunday lunchtime or Monday morning uh, so you've got it with that if they did yeah, absolutely and, and sometimes that's outlined by the venue so if you've got a venue that says you've got access from thursday to sunday that dictates that if it's in your garden someone's more likely to go tuesday wednesday to monday and have it for that slightly longer period we've had it where someone's had a friday wedding and then dad's had his 50th birthday on the saturday and they've properly you know gone to <laughs> have it GPs, you know, as much as they can whilst it's there. And I don't blame people, you know. No, but... no. Well, they are amazing, aren't they? Yeah. Um, and uh, I remember the first time I walked in a TV and they look quite small from the outside and then you get in and it's just, wow, you know, it's just this magic, that magical moment. And I, because we do quite a lot of the open events with you, don't we? Yeah. And I love that moment when um, people first walk in and I see their face every single time when they've never been in one before and they go, oh, OK. <laughs> and especially um, parents and, you know, yeah. grandparents, because if you said to somebody, oh, we're, we're having our wedding in a tent, they might think, oh, OK. But then they walk in and it's, oh, right. I, get it. I understand now. And we've had yeah. people walk in and cry. And it's been happy tears and it's just such a beautiful thing to see as well like they've walked in because their daughter's booked it they've never seen it before and probably a little bit apprehensive about mm. what it is that they've booked just like you said and then when they've come in literally the tears of joy and like i get it i understand it you know i can't wait to show this off to my own friends now as well mm. Mm. And, and it's nice isn't it when everyone kind of gets gets on board and gets involved in that moment um so da, 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 da. you've got a sailcloth as well haven't you we have so that was new for us for last year um and that's sort of clear all the way around so what that means is that you can have the sides rolled up or off and it definitely brings more of the outdoor in and the popularity of that is definitely growing for us um it is different to the tps um but it's beautiful as well in its own way so for those of you who are watching and don't know what a sailcloth is um can you explain what it is it's it's kind of a marquee isn't it but yeah, it's like a traditional pole marquee so you've got wooden poles inside um and then as i say it's like clear on the outside um so yeah it is it is white whereas the cheapie is obviously beigey creamy Brownie. So like this. Like, yeah, so like, for the occasion. <laughs> uh, so as I say, it is completely different. And because it's because it's got straight sides, it offers something different in sort of the atmosphere it creates as opposed to a TP as well. So that it, yeah. I I look at them as like an upmarket marquee. Yeah. They are. They're it's they're so lovely. And I was I was due to be styling it, wasn't I? for our uh, spring open event at uh, Mapley Farm. Yes. But we had to postpone it, didn't we? Postponed. So I'm looking forward to you getting hold of it and seeing what mm. you can decide. Obviously, I've done a few of the, the teepees, and like you say, it's a completely different vibe inside the inside the sailcloth, and it's really bright and white, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to doing it. Yeah, it, it means that you can definitely play with, with colour. There's certain colours in a teepee that don't work work so well um whereas with this it's, it is just gives you the palette to work with whatever you want to wear with 
yeah so you you do quite a lot of these open events don't you multiple times a year obviously can't do any at the moment yes um do you want to talk to me about those where they are yeah absolutely so we have a number of showcase events throughout the year they tend to be sort of either Cuttlebrook in Derbyshire Leslie's just mentioned the Mapley Farm one that we're due to have in May um Borden Lodge Farm um in Nampanton Loughborough and also our biggest event that we have in October where we work with Leslie closely with are the Cato's Farm for the Outdoor Wedding Show and that is um an opportunity for you as a couple to come and see the teepees the cell cloth tent the glamping teepees but also what you come in to see is um and we always call it showcase because it's suppliers showcasing to you how your wedding day could look, could feel, could taste, because there's food there, could sound, because there's live music. And it's not like a wedding fair, is it? We, we don't all have a table and it's not really no. formal and structured. We, we literally set it up as if it would be a wedding. Absolutely. It's about an experience and we always want to create an experience with these events that we put on. Um, and it, it's exciting a lot of work goes into it so it's almost like planning a wedding mm. um, because we can be working with as many as 50 suppliers for one event um, so yeah so it's always interesting um, but what we put together is just something very special that just helps support other local um, suppliers that they're then in a, a, a sort of a place to exhibit that is the right the marketplace for them what they can do yeah uh I, I love it because it's my opportunity to showcase something new as well for me in terms of styling. We tend to do a styled shoot a few days before, don't we? And we, we try out new ideas and test test things out and, and yeah. I love it. It's time to get playful. Yeah, and, and as a creative person, I love that. Yeah. I, love, I look forward to it every year. And obviously I've done a few wedding fairs and shows and things in the past and this really is the one to go to yeah uh, the way it's organized and you get goodie bags and things don't you yeah yeah and we make sure suppliers put goodies in there so there's often sort of sweets notepads you know nice treats in there mm, and like the run-up to it is is really amazing as well everything for the first you know those few weeks before it's you introduce all the suppliers and it's just really helpful in terms of finding your perfect dream team isn't it yeah yeah and people often say like they've come to an event and they've found their wedding team and i always say this style of wedding is about putting the right team around you surround yourself with the right team mm. and when you come to one of these showcase events you know you're gonna find a large chunk of those uh, team members for you yeah so we've got a quick question um saying her signal went um, so which which one is that? Can you just quickly say to them again? So we have um, showcase events through the year. Um, so we have some at Cutterbrook, um, Bourne Lodge Farm, and the biggest one is Cato's Farm. And that is in the diary. We are hoping that this is happening for that first weekend in October. We've got everything crossed. And the only reason we say that is that um, there's a lot of obviously people moving dates at the moment, as we can appreciate that we're also conscious that that could become somebody's sort of wedding, wedding day. Exactly. So it's in the diary. That's what we're working towards. But we're just kind of waiting to see what happens a little bit. Yeah. Um, we'll be doing a showcase later this year. Yeah. Uh, have you had to postpone any? Um, we've postponed showcase events. Uh, do you mean weddings? Weddings, yeah. So we've postponed all April, May um, weddings and parties um, some June weddings have now postponed and we've got some June weddings still looking to go ahead but they all have a plan b date in the diary and they're going to make their decision sort of probably sort of four weeks before leave it as close to as they can before they can make that decision of yes we're going to stick with it and go with our with our date or actually I think the sensible thing is to kind of almost draw a line and, and go to plan b and and our job's been to support those couples with those plan b's and sometimes mm. even plan B's. so we've got couples that have maybe put, said you know we'll have it in end of July and then they've kind of gone but with a plan C for October even mm. and it's just working with people to come up with solutions during this interesting time yeah it's, it's very bizarre isn't it um as has everybody managed to find a new date that wanted a new date has it all been pretty smooth 
Yeah, so touch wood, so far it has been, I say we've worked with couples up to that end point of June um, and then sort of conversation with sort of early mid-July weddings and then we're just kind of working on a month by month basis that give it another few weeks if we need to start talking to end of July. Obviously we have spoken to them but if we need to start putting those plan B's in for them then that's what we'll do, August weddings that we'll do. So just kind of on a roll in month by month to sort of tricky at the moment isn't it because obviously the um march april may brides have pretty much been told you can't do your wedding you're going to, have to change and then the ones later on are still not sure and they've not been told and it's because you know nobody knows nobody knows. it is really really a tricky time and i do feel for everybody at the moment you know suppliers venues brides and grooms everybody i feel for everybody it's just very weird time in the wedding industry yeah it is we're definitely seeing couples that were maybe thinking about getting married next year actually probably spending this time doing a bit of research and finding out what it's all about obviously that research is instagram and pinterest at the moment um you know they're actually spending this time planning and we've had a couple book for 2022 and i was like Mm. Sounds like you're about ready to celebrate already. They knew what they wanted, they yeah. knew what their wedding venue was, how they wanted the TPs to look. Um, that actually 2022 probably seems like quite a long way away for them almost, mm. um, just because they had this time. But you would encourage people to get in contact as soon as possible, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, we've got we're supporting those couples, so we've got a lot is we are very busy sort of may june next year but we do still have availability for sort of summer next year and then obviously going into 2022 but yeah my advice is always speak to suppliers that you're interested in working with as, as soon as i know particularly for us obviously we've been moving quite a lot of weddings so you know those those dates next year they are filling up so i really would encourage everybody if you are planning to um have any suppliers you know, not just us but any suppliers get in touch with them as soon as you can otherwise dates might not might not be there yeah because next year is going to be a very different year to how it normally is yeah. um, i know i've got a lot of midweek weddings next year and um i've got one on new year's eve um and you know lots of december weddings and i feel like winter might be become a bit of a, a wedding season for us the new summer <laughs> i know all, all the all the snow we don't, haven't had any snow this year not not any decent snow anyway no. we've had the teepees out in snow before and i bet they look amazing, don't yeah, they? we had one event it, again it was sort of in our early years and they were out over christmas and they they got snowed in um so we had to dig them out before we could take them down so um that's yeah. real, that's real nordic though isn't it yeah it is but, I hope they had all like um, you know the reindeer hides and the and all the Nordic styling inside. Yeah, it was for a party, so I think she had even put a Christmas tree inside as well. Oh, that's so magical! <laughs> because you have all fairy lights and everything inside as well, don't you? Yeah, we do definitely. And I always say that the teepees particularly make it feel like you've got two different venue um, styles. Um, and the same with the sailcloth, really, is because what you see in the daytime is. Mm completely transforms at night when the lights take hold the light changes the sun sets so yeah it's a, it's a magical time when that light changes yeah um right i'm just having a look at my other questions so do, do, do. what's the biggest tp setup you've done um, the TPs joined together to create one event space. So we've joined, um, we've had a party with six giant hat TPs. Our biggest wedding has been five giant hat TPs. Average tends to be either two in the chill out or three. And how many people can you fit in there? Um, we always say, we start with your guest numbers, um, both daytime and evening, and also what else you want in that space. So sort of... If you want a band, you need a bit more space. Yeah, it's things like that. And if you, you go book a photo booth and this big grand bar and all of a sudden you potentially might need a, another TP just to host all that. Um, so it is about everything else that you've got going on as well as, as, well as your guest numbers. So three giant hat TPs, um, generally people sort of seating up to about 100. It can seat up to sort of 120. And then we sort of say party up to about 160. 
Um, but like with anything, people push it. And we've had 150 people sign three giant hat teepees, but there's just nothing else in there. Uh, mm. So that's why we always say, you know, it's, it's not what we'd be advising to you. We'd really be thinking about how your day is going to flow from day to night and making sure that space is comfortable for you for the whole time. Mm. And you put like plans together for them, don't they? And like the, the layout and you can play with table locations and, and all of that. Yeah, yeah, we have, we always have two planning meetings with our couples that book with us. We always say six months before, because at this point, you've more or less got your key suppliers locked down. You're just about sending out your invites. Um, so we have our first planning meeting then and a second one at six weeks. And that first planning meeting is to go through how you see your day, sort of time on your day, your suppliers that you've got involved and your guest numbers. And from that, we'll sit and work together a floor plan that's going to work for you. Mm. Um, and like you say, put the tables in, where the dance floor is going to go, where the bar is going to go, the band, and kind of get all that information down in a floor plan. And then our six-week meeting, the purpose of that is to go, does it still work? Um, well, actually, we've had six people drop off, so we can yeah. do people, but we've booked X, Y, Z instead. And, you know, it might be that we have to completely recreate it, or actually it does still work with just a few tweaks. So. Yeah, so things always change, don't they? You know, we, we have a couple of meetings as well where we have the initial consultation and they say, oh, we've got 80 guests. And then the next next time we meet, they've got 110. And <laughs> things change and, or, you know, it works the opposite way. Yeah, that's it. And we're always like being flexible, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. I would say to somebody, what you've got booked isn't what you're going to have and it's not because you can't have it but you will change your mind and things will change things will develop as part of your wedding journey and that's why we remain flexible with you you know if you book long tables but then you decide you want rounds it's no problem at all we'll work with you as your plans and ideas develop and when we create those floor plans we also share them with the couple's wedding team so if you're mm. on the list we'll obviously email a copy over to you so you can kind of see what we're working with and identify where there might be a good place to say hang something um and it just helps them support the team um their wedding team with questions and information that they might need um from the tps or because it, well, obviously it's not a traditional venue where you'd ask the venue no um, no um i've i've received those i can confirm i have received those <laughs> for, for any of the weddings um and they do they do really help personally for me because i can then count exactly how many seats and you know i, I know where things are going to be um obviously we've worked together quite a lot i know you have uh, lots of other recommended suppliers on your website don't you yes uh, we build a team of local suppliers that people we've worked with and couples have had good experience with and we also do take people off that list if someone's not getting the service that they should be getting from a supplier. But also, you don't mind if a couple's already booked a certain florist or, you know, are you happy to have anybody yeah. in there? Yeah, absolutely. And couples sometimes might come in from us, which is absolutely fine. You know, we'll encourage that wherever. Um, but yeah, that Sammy's friends is obviously a guide, a start point for people. But you're right; we often get people go, "Oh, but my aunt's, you know, she's going to make a cake, or you know, she's going to help me with flowers." And, and that's kind of what this style of wedding's about: is kind of bringing in family and friends to help where they where they can. Mm. And I know you've written the the book, haven't you? The ultimate guide to planning an outdoor wedding. Yeah, um, there's a lot to think about, isn't there? You know, for example, if aunt mary is making the cake you know do we leave it in there overnight <laughs> no <laughs> so little things like that um so what else can you read about in your book there's literally when we knew we were writing this book we put out to couples that got married with them and asked them for their wedding tips as well so throughout it's scattered from tips from those people that have i remember there was one and um, her tip was cut the wedding cake. And they had this wedding cake, beautiful wedding cake. They've got um, Lego figures all over it to represent sort of their guests and them. Um, so I saw, the, saw the, I saw the photo of it. And I said to Craig when they took down, I was like, did you get wedding cake on tape, Dan? He was like, oh, yeah, it was lovely. And it was because they forgot to cut their wedding cake. And I know. <laughs> and I, you know, when you're in a venue, that cake will get scooped away. Take it you to get the kitchen. Prompt, 
don't you? Yeah, they'll get chopped off and brought back out. Now, if you've got a caterer that's with you, say, daytime through tonight, I know you had Thomas on earlier this week, it might be that that job's delegated to someone like Thomas and they'll chop it up and, and it's, you know, it's out there for you and your guests to enjoy. But if that's not the case... Um, it is just assigning that job to maybe Aunt Mabel, who's made the cake for you, that you also ask her if she can cut it up after you've cut, cut the cake. And it's it's just little things like that, little tips that's just scattered throughout the whole book, really. Um, and how can people buy a copy of that if they did it? So you can buy it off Amazon um, for a physical copy at the moment, or if you wanted an e-copy, um, with, if you visit sammytp.co.uk forward slash book hyphen offer it's also in our link in our Instagram bio you can grab an e-copy of that right now for special price of I think it's £2.49 or something like that and it's probably about 12 quid on Amazon um, so I'll leave that choice with the, with you just pop me a message and I can sort that out for you amazing so if everybody anybody did want to get in contact with you what is the best way to get in touch um, so you can direct message me on Instagram. Uh, you can pop over to our website, so sammytp.co.uk. Um, we've got lots of forms on there, and you can download a brochure from there too. Um, send me an email, um, so team at sammytp, um, and then we'll pick that up and deal with you. We're offering virtual coffee chats, a bit like yourself, Leslie, as well. Um, so if you did want to book in and just have a face-to-face -face chat, almost a bit like this, I'm happy to do that to talk through um, your day in the process, really. Because there's a lot of a lot involved, isn't there, with it? So no questions too big or too small, is it? Yeah, absolutely. That's what we're here for. And I always say questions are welcomed. Definitely. Um, I'm just looking down my list. <laughs> uh, so I think that is all my questions. Other than um, talking about your uh, Wedding Industry Award, award, um, <laughs> you are officially the best marquee supplier in the whole of the UK. Oh, I'm blushing. Thank you. I know. I know. Isn't it incredible? <laughs> oh, dear. It was, it was such a momentous occasion. It really did. I think it it meant more to us than we realized it meant at that moment in time when it was announced um and the joy of that particular award is that it is based on client feedback and what they say and then also that judging process as you know yourself leslie being an award winner yourself i know so we obviously we we all won the regional didn't we um thomas the caterer yourselves joe from my perfect ceremony who i'm chatting to tomorrow um and uh, a few other people that i know and we all headed off down to london and to be honest i was just going to have a good time yeah. um with with some of my friends and we were all sat at the back <laughs> never expected to win anything and then all of a sudden thomas gets an award and then a couple of minutes later you get an award and then we get an award and i was like this is insane. Oh, so the Midlands are, are rocking it. Absolutely. We've, do you know what? We are so fortunate in the Midlands. We have, we are, we have got some of the best suppliers. We, I think we're definitely forward thinking in our approach with weddings. We are a, a, a forefront of, um, forefront of it all, definitely. I completely agree. I, I do love being in the Midlands. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so uh, have you got anything that you want to add? So I'm going to ask you then, so Leslie, tell yeah. me, when you sit with a couple that's got a Sammy TP wedding booked, yeah. where do you start with creating their styling plan for them? Okay, so um, obviously we create our styling plans, um, which is like a mood board. I've got some over there, I can grab one. But um, we, I'm trying to think, if I've got one, a Sammy TP one, watch this space. <laughs> they might be at the showroom. Let's have a look. This is great viewing, Leslie. <laughs> you, get, you get to see my tumble dryer and um, Otis Redding and Aretha Franklin. <laughs> so I have got one here. This was one that we did uh, last year, wasn't it? So this is yeah. Abby and Sam's uh, wedding, and that was at Mapley Farm. 
And um, for those of you that don't know, we put the styling plan together, and it's the colour scheme, and it's all the uh, all the styling of how we're going to do the day. And then actually in the back, we have the layout that uh, you sent me, so we all know what we're doing. But basically, if we if we're working with a semi TP client, um, I always feel at ease because I know it's it's just you know it's just easy to. I, I'm familiar with them and I know that I can just drop you a message if there's anything I need or, you know, but we, we sit down and we go through it and I'll, I'll say, you know, how many, all the, all the normal stuff, how many guests are you having and uh, what, what do you want? And we'll talk about colours, like you said earlier, some colours don't particularly work well in a teepee because it's a, a funny colour. Um, and then we basically just, just work as normal. Um and then on the on the day when it comes to set up, we'll probably set up the day before, set up the majority of everything the day before. And then we come back in the morning to do the finishing touches and make sure any things that can't be left out overnight get put out, such as stationery and menus and cakes. And then, um, yeah, and then we leave you to it. But uh, yeah, I do love, I do love the TP weddings. They, they're completely different and they, they, they bring me a lot of joy. Yeah, no, I I love seeing it all to come together, that process, and it all finally come together. And it's a bit like when we work together on the showcase events. I know I can say, right, Leslie, this is the floor plan. Off you go. Without question, I just know that the end result is going to be something special. And I don't have to say, oh, well, I want it to be, and can you incorporate, and I'd like this. Just leave you to it. And, I, and there's that trust there, and I know what you're going to deliver is going to be something very awesome very special oh, thanks <laughs> <laughs> little ego boost <laughs> is there anything else you want to add uh, thank you for having me thank you yeah that's very welcome thanks for coming on i think it's really really helpful isn't it and and like like i said at the beginning you know we've got all this time on our hands let's use it productively and you know do the wedding planning and and find suppliers and i just think it's really nice to spread the word about people that i love and trust so yeah yeah so i'm really grateful for you coming on and chatting to me i hope everybody has yeah, found that you. useful if anybody's got any questions, they can just dm us absolutely yeah. happy to answer have stuff right thank you Oh, well, I'm going to uh, switch you off and I'll uh, leave you the rest of your day. Thank you very much. I'll speak to you later. Bye. See ya. Bye. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, obviously, each day this week I've been talking to a completely different wedding supplier. Um, and today is obviously all about the teepees and the marquees and the sailcloth structures. So tomorrow I'm going to be back talking to Joe from My Perfect Ceremony, who is a wedding celebrant. So if you've got any questions for her, have a think about those. And um, I'm going to upload this onto uh, my stories. So if you have just tuned in and you missed the beginning, go back and watch it. All right. Thank you very much. See you later. Have a nice day.